Okay, so um, all the talks today have focused on the internet as a um, collection of text, uh, which is primarily what the internet used to be. It uh, even has it embedded in its most base protocols. It's the hypertext uh, transfer protocol, right? So this talk um, by Gillian, uh, by Zeno from Gillian, uh, is going to be about video, specifically about the advancements that uh, have been made in the last couple of years, I would say, um, on because browsers have now far more capabilities. You can actually do native rendering of videos within browsers. You can put things on top of videos. You can uh, work with videos in very interesting ways. Bandwidth has also uh, made videos more accessible to the rest of the world. So today is going to be a story about Sublime Video, which is a uh, product as well as a service that Gillian offers, and um, also talking about HTML5 video and the new capabilities there. One, two, three, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Zeno. I'm a front end developer, and I work for a, for a small company uh, called Gillion that I co founded three years ago. This is our team, and we are based in uh, Switzerland. Today, I'd like to talk to you about uh, video and uh, video players on the web and specifically about HTML5 video. Um, we happened to be there at the very beginning between 2009 and 2010, just before HTML5 video took off. And uh, we have been working with this uh, technology and follow, followed its evolution very, very closely in the last three years. So I thought I would uh, uh, share some of the challenges that we faced and um, and uh, why we made some of the de decisions that we made. And so I will also use uh, uh, the story of our startup and uh, of our product, Sublime Video, to, to give this talk. And at the end, I will talk specifically about the latest announcement that we did. But first of all, a little bit of background about HTML5 video. This is the HTML5 video element or a video tag and uh, it's the core of the HTML5 video specification. And it's been created basically to become uh, the standard way of uh, adding, uh, showing a video on the web without plugin. Okay? Uh, just curious, how many of you have already played around with the video tag? Yeah, I would say more than 50% of the audience. Nice. So it's, it's pretty, it looks pretty simple, um, but there is a question I would like you to think about. And you know, the, the tag is called video, but is this uh, a video or is it a player or is it both? And you have probably never thought about this, but uh, I think it's pretty interesting to get the, the, the difference. So let me simplify the video element just a little bit. You shouldn't write it like that, but just for the sake of example, I removed one of the sources so you can write it as one line and show it along an image tag that you know very well. And you can definitely uh, see the, the, the symmetry there, the image, video, and the source. And uh, you know very well that the first image tag uh, will basically download and render the image on screen directly and you will see it immediately. But if you load a page with the video tag below, you won't see anything. I mean, at best, you are going to see a rectangle with the first still frame of the video, but you won't, will not be able to watch the video. And that's because uh, to watch a video, you need, uh, you, what do you need? A player, yeah. <laughs> it will get more complex than this. Um, and uh, fortunately, in the HTML5 uh, video specification, there is a way to turn on and to display the default video player that is built into the browser. And you do that by adding the controls attribute. Okay? And so it will look like this in Chrome. 
Okay? So we have our player, it looks so simple, the video will play, it's awesome. In reality, you will see it's a little bit more complex than that. So yeah, this will at least will allow us to watch the video. But uh, you know, these default video players have been in browsers now for, uh, I don't know, more than three years. And if you think about it, uh, uh, yeah, actually it was looking like this before in Chrome, maybe, but, but if you think about it, you don't see them very often, right? And uh, the reality is that uh, few people, few web publisher and a few designer are satisfied by that. And there are different reasons, I give you two. One is inconsistency, so every uh, browser has a different default player built in. You know, designers don't like that. And um, another problem you have is that uh, you have really basic uh, playback functionalities. So you have a play, pause, a volume, and if you are lucky, a full screen button. But let's say you want to add, you know, an HD switch an HD button to switch uh, the source quality, like you will probably see in 99% of all the flash video players that you're used to see every day. Well, you cannot do that here. So if you remove the controls attribute, you are left with uh, this simple video and a very important part, the HTML5 video API. And uh, with uh, that, uh, you can actually build uh, your own custom player on top of the video. And uh, that is what we did. We started to play around uh, with uh, a video tag and the HTML5 video API around the end of 2009. And uh, we were actually the first to show a demo page of a custom HTML5 video player. And, uh, you know, it was, we were, we did this just as a side project, uh, but we were uh, pretty excited because it was the first time that we could build our own player exactly like we wanted without using Flash. It was simply not possible before. And in addition to that, uh, we, we, we had something that uh, was uh, um, um, displaying consistently across all the browsers, and uh, we could add this uh, custom feature, for instance, that you could not add in the default bar, you know. And so we were pretty excited internally, but uh, frankly, we didn't expect uh, so many geeks and uh, so many other people to be excited about this too. And in fact, we tweeted uh, about that demo page in January uh, 2010, and uh, the thing went pretty viral, so we were completely unknown uh, at that time. We had like 40 or 50 followers on Twitter, and uh, then in like one week we got over 3,500 followers, up to 8,000, which is for a startup in Switzerland, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty big. And also, um, um, the page after a couple of months got uh, over one million unique visitors. So we, we clearly, Get, got uh, a, a push from all those users to basically turn that demo page into a real product. And that's what we did. Um, but at the beginning, we didn't know it would have been so complicated. So I will tell you about the challenges that we faced. Uh, because it's really, it's really we in this process, we learned that uh, HTML5 video, despite all its uh, amazing, awesome potentials, it's really something that is not as simple and works flawlessly as you would think. So the first problem is API bugs. So HTML5 video API has really a lot of bugs and it's a mix of bugs and stuff that is missing because it's still not completely uh, implemented everywhere. And, uh, but the bugs are, are it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, I don't think other uh, specification in HTML5 are so buggish. And I believe it's because video is maybe a little bit more complex because uh, the API has to interface with a lower uh, level, uh, you know, f to do the, the video decoding and stuff. And it's maybe complicated, but you won't believe even today, there is no simple, no browser, even the latest Chrome or Firefox or, that has absolutely no bugs with this. And uh, I won't bore you with the list, but I have many. If you are interested, you can come by after the talk. And uh, so th these are, are being fixed uh, progressively. 
re a little bit slow, but uh, they are being fixed. But the problem then is that you have mobile devices that uh, uh, stick around for some time and uh, they are not uh, updated, you know, like Android devices. And uh, I mean, we have to provide a serious solution that plays video everywhere. We cannot uh, um, ignore those problems. So it's pretty difficult to handle all the, all the cases. Which brings me to the next point, which is device fragmentation. Probably a lot of talks uh, in this conference about this. Uh, we are in the middle of a, a, a huge explosion of uh, mobile devices that supports HTML5. Uh, I mean, this year in 2013, there will be over a billion sold worldwide. It's amazing. And, uh, you know, you have different uh, mobile platforms, uh, iOS, Android, uh, BlackBerry, Windows Phone, and uh, with their upgrade, mobile OS upgrades, and potentially every device or every mobile OS upgrades has the potential to introduce uh, new inconsistency, inconsistency or bugs in the way the HTML5 video specification is implemented. So we have to, you know, every new device that comes out, we have to, to test it and be sure that the thing works. And believe me, it's not something that uh, it's, uh, it's uh, simple. Another big problem is video formats. Let me just give you a little uh, background. Right now, we have uh, essentially three uh, video formats that uh, people use uh, to uh, do video with HTML5 on the web. MPEG4, WebM, and OGG. The, the value, for your information, the value uh, in bold is called the container format. And then next to it, I put uh, the video codec slash the audio codec that are used inside the container. And uh, the problem is that uh, not a single one of those formats works across all browsers. And can you imagine it? I mean, it's like having an image tag. Here is uh, the browser support. It's like having an image tag that, uh, you know, for which you, you cannot use, it, for instance, JPEG, just JPEG. It's like for every image that you want to embed, you have to add a JPEG and maybe a PNG version. It's really painful. But it's even worse than that, because at least with images, you could convert them uh, like that in another format. But video, to encode them, to encode a video into another format is really a slow process and painful process. So people do not want to encode in different formats. It's painful. And if they are going to choose one format, uh, <laughs> it's difficult, but it's probably going to be MPEG-4 because there is where you have the mobile and iOS support because you know the mobile devices have hardware chips that do the decoding and so it's you can have in as little phone you can have a, a full HD a video decoding and so this gets really tricky because now imagine the situation that we are in we have an HTML5 video player cutting edge and then we have uh, two great HTML5 browsers like Firefox and Opera that do not support the MPEG-4 and uh, our video player will not, our HTML5 video player will not work if the user just put an MPEG-4. And, uh, and uh, so it's, it's difficult. And fortunately, uh, fortunately, there is a flash that uh, um, supports MPEG-4. And so basically what we did is that we uh, build a second version of the player completely in flash and we for this reason, and we made them look identical, so the end user will not even see the difference. But, uh, and so for instance, if you are on Opera or um, Firefox, and the user just specified a video tag with an MPEG-4, you will get the, the Flash version of our, of our player. But you start to see that uh, it's pretty uh, difficult to, you, you know, to, to provide a, a complete solution that works everywhere. The other challenge that uh, we have is the conflicts with existing JavaScript and CSS code in the page. Now, if you have a Flash video player, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't care about the, the CSS rules that you have in the rest of the page. It's pretty isolated. But if you are building an HTML5 video player with uh, DOM nodes and CSS, uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the UI can get really messed up with existing CSS in the page, especially if you do it without an iframe like uh, we, we do. 
And so it's been, uh, you know, one thing is, is to do a video, an HTML5 player that works in one page, like that demo page that we did. Another thing is doing a video player with HTML5 that has to work on every page out there. Every page and with every condition of CSS and JavaScript. And it's been very difficult. Now, for all this reason, for all this, uh, because of all these challenges, because of the um, uh, continuous evolution of HTML5 videos, the bugs that uh, to fix, uh, um, the new devices that come out almost every week. You know, we were uh, we were just before we 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 announced the, this uh, the, the final product. We were thinking, well, if we provide it as a as a zip file that the developer will download and then will install it. Uh, himself in his web server, well, that player will become obsolete in a matter of days. And if he doesn't, uh, you know, every time we do an update, uh, he forgets to, 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 to download the updates, but will, the video will stop working on some devices. So we said, well, we need to deliver this player uh, as a service in the cloud. And so this is what uh, we did. And we are still doing it today, and it's working really, really well, and our users are, are extremely happy about it. Basically, it works like this. You, you just, in addition to the video tags, you know, you have to provide one line of JavaScript, just one line. And no installation, no, uh, no uh, download required. The, you get your player up and running in minutes. And then if, you, if we detect a new platform to support, we just, uh, uh, just uh, perform an update. And you don't have to do anything. And uh, we do this for, uh, um, for thousands of websites. And uh, if uh, there is a problem somewhere, for instance, in a particular device, uh, in a particular browser, or in a particular page, we can perform the maintenance and then update all of our users in real time globally. And uh, this is really nice because it makes uh, uh, the solution stronger and stronger every day. So basically, you see that uh, from uh, uh, that demo page, we basically end up building a player that uh, can play video on any platform, on any browser, on any web page without high frame, plus uh, a uh, cloud infrastructure to deliver it and to keep it always up to date. And we launched this uh, on March 2011, and it's been working really well. We have happy uh, customers. Here is, uh, are a few examples. But uh, there is a, a but. Uh, we wanted to push this further. Because uh, if you look at all those sites that are using our player, and you look the player, it's basically always the same player. Let me just zoom it to. It's this player. Same look, black and white, same basic features. And uh, I already explained that just to do that, that it appears very simple for the end user, in reality, behind the scenes, is very complex. But the problem is that we wanted to go beyond that because uh, users were asking more features. And, uh, you know, they were asking, I don't know, subtitles support or they want to add social sharing features in the player, or some people want a different look of the player, others want to change the colors of the player. It's all things, things that were easy to do with Flash when we, you know, where there was Flash and no mobile devices, only desktop computer. But now with the architecture that we had at that point, which by the way is the same that other serious services like YouTube and uh, Vimeo are using, it's basically, the architecture in the player is basically, involve, it basically involves having multiple separate code bases. So, as I explained before, we have an HTML5 player for the desktop, this one. Then we build a Flash player. And then we have also mobile players for iPad and the diff so different code base. And it's pretty difficult to make, to make that architecture scale if people are, want to all these different features. And... Uh, uh, that's why we basically uh, spend uh, last year, uh, actually more than uh, over a year, uh, trying to solve this problem, which is really difficult, specifically for video players. And uh, we um, developed uh, a framework that uh, 
um, unifies all these different technologies and uh, you know, abstract them away and abstract away all the differences between this technology and basically allow us to create, uh, it's called uh, Sublime Video Horizon, and basically allow us to create any possible uh, video player we can imagine in terms of design and features. Here are a few examples. They are all existing players that we built with our framework and they are not mockups. You can see them on our website. And they are not a flash player, they are HTML5 video players. This is a player we did for Sony. They will use on all the Sony Europe website. And this is an HTML5 branded player that we built just, we built just for uh, demo purposes. And uh, uh, very importantly, these players are now built with a single code base. And uh, the framework will take care of making them work and graphically render exactly the same in all browsers, really all. We have, uh, this is the, the, the this branded player, uh, HTML5 branded player working on Chrome. We can even go down to i8 and even i6. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the CSS is completely, <laughs> You can see that the, the CSS is broken, but our player stays pretty rock solid. I will explain how we, we can do that. And then it works also on mobile and on the latest mobile platform, Android, uh, and uh, here the iPad. And we actually have uh, some nice touches to make the UI slightly bigger to be touch friendly, but that's a, a detail. Now, uh, this uh, framework uh, uh, is a pretty rich uh, technology that covers uh, almost uh, every uh, aspect of creating a video player. You, you, you are not able probably to read, this is an architecture diagram, you can find it uh, on our website. But to conclude my talk, uh, I just uh, wanted to um, uh, quickly talk about uh, one of those aspects, which is uh, the graphics library that is blinking over there. And uh, I also choose that because it will be a nice transition to the final talk that Vince, Vincent will give uh, on the graphical webs. And I will be getting maybe a little bit off topic from video because I will be talking about graphics. But it's a really important part of our framework because basically this library allows us to uh, draw all of our player UI using vector graphics. So all the players that you saw in the latest ones uh, do not use images. So the, they will look just beautiful on every screen, on retina displays, even on, t on touch devices. When you pinch to zoom, uh, you won't see pixelization. It, it's really uh, great. And the problem, the really challenging problem that we had uh, is that you don't have a single uh, drawing engine that will work across all browsers. You have different ways of doing that, but not a single one will work across browsers. And so we have to use different te techniques. We mainly use SVG for modern browsers, and it's great, but uh, SVG doesn't work everywhere. Uh, for instance, uh, um, you know, you, you, have, you have some browsers which are still used that support SVG, but uh, do not support the latest version of SVG that has filters that allow us to draw shadows like this. It's iOS 5 and i9, for instance. So, for instance, on i9, we use Canvas, which, as Vincent will probably tell you, it's a completely different technology than SVG. And uh, to make it work uh, on i8 and 6, we actually use uh, Flash to draw the little uh, layers and the little views composing the UI which is also another completely different technology. But uh, the thing is that, uh, the nice thing of this library is that we don't have to code with Flash or, or, or ActionScript or even Canvas or SVG. We just use our unified drawing API. It's a JavaScript simple API. And we draw the player once with it. And then the framework will uh, take care of uh, uh, automatically translating to the appropriate uh, rendering engine. Now, we use this uh, uh, technology internally to uh, build and write all the players that we do, that you can see on our website. But uh, we want uh, to add many different things to this uh, framework. And uh, right now, this technology is not yet ready for you to use uh, you know, directly to develop your own players. 
But uh, we are definitely uh, considering all possible options to give developer access to this technology. And uh, if you are interested to know more about it, just uh, uh, come by after the talk and I can give more details. So thank you very much. Hello? How oh. am I going first? All right, I'll go, go ahead. First. Um, how do you test it across all the different yeah. devices? You have to come to our office. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I mean, there is absolutely no other way. I mean, on iOS, you could, you know, at the very beginning uh, in 2009, we, ha we have had the iOS simulator. But uh, you just can't use the, 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 the emulator, Android emulator in, on the other device. It's just not possible. You have to have the real device. So we have lots of them. And, um, you know, yeah, uh, we use all the tools that, the, that people already mentioned during the, these talks. But there is, of course, also some manual, uh, manual uh, things going on, for mobile especially. Yeah, we like, so you know clicking and seeing actually that you know, the UI is uh, working. And yeah, we had the same issue with History JS, and we we're just like, I don't know. <laughs> so, it's yeah. a pain. Yeah. yeah, I'll chat to you afterwards, maybe. Absolutely. Oh, cheers. But you know, since we, we we know how much painful it is, and uh, we know that other people that would have to do that, uh, so so we think we bring value with our solution. You know, exactly for that reason we. Uh, Zeno? Yeah. Yes. Uh, could I use your uh, drawing API to draw something else than a player? Very good question. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, the whole framework has been thought specifically for video players, but if I show you, basically, you will have to, you can do this, go to the side and see this, but. The, 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 the basic framework here has absolutely nothing, uh, there is n no relation with a video player, you know. It's just uh, uh, composed by libraries, generic libraries, so a graphic library, a module library, a, a, a library to, to, to manage media, audio and video, but it's not, the, the video player code is not in there. So, uh, Absolutely. In theory, the, that uh, that the graphics library could be used to build, I don't know, uh, a slide share uh, player to 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 visualize the slides. You know, it's typically. I think it's uh, you you don't want to use it to build a full website, but it would be great if you have to build something that is uh, afterwards embeddable, like in a rectangle, to embed in other sites. So that it would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have one. Here, uh, okay. so I have one question. Who is uh, talking? Yeah. That? Yes, hi. Yeah. So uh, my question is, uh, do you support the uh, video editing or annotating the video feature as of now? Annotating? Annotating the video. So, uh, no. Um, yeah, but what do you mean exactly? Uh, automatically, or you mean for subtitles or captioning support? Yeah, probably subtitle or adding some note at a particular uh, slice of time. Yeah. But I want to add extra comment to that video. Yeah, so basically we are actually right now, uh, the team is Switzerland, maybe not today, but uh, we are developing uh, the subtitle support and the captioning support, basically the support for the track element, which is a part of the HTML5 video. And it's really nice. It supports uh, subtitle captioning, but also chapters, description, and metadata. And we are integrating all that. And then, uh, uh, I mean, we cannot do uh, automatic uh, uh, transcription. But if there, is, there are other technologies that do that, and they, they can output uh, uh, some captioning uh, file that we, we are able to, to integrate into the player. And then we have a, a pretty powerful uh, public JavaScript API with which you can control the player. And uh, for instance, we will release very soon a, a Qpoint API that uh, basically you can add uh, actions to a specific time in the, in the player. So you could have, for instance, uh, uh, you know, having the text of, uh, of the video 
um, below the, the player and then uh, uh, seeing the, the words that are uh, uh, that are being said in the video, uh, you, you can see that graphically advance below. Okay, and uh, another question. Uh, uh, from an end user, I'm not able to understand the difference between this as a video player against the YouTube. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's because uh, you, are t you are totally right. Uh, so YouTube uh, is uh, it's absolutely great. And in the, the, when, I saw, when I showed to you the, 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 uh, the slides with our customers, you know, those, most of those were just before we announced our latest uh, uh, player that we announced it in uh, December last year. And those were all customers that already, for some reason, they didn't want it to go on YouTube. And there are different reasons. Because you want uh, to keep control on your sources. You know, you don't want maybe the social aspect of it, people adding comments, or maybe for business uh, uh, or commercial reasons. Uh, so that's why it's people, it's, uh, you know, our customer are not the end user, our customer are web publisher, and maybe they already decided they don't want to use YouTube. But uh, having said that, uh, I mean, more and more people are using YouTube, and we actually offer a pretty amazing uh, integration with YouTube that you can check out on our website. And basically, you can take any uh, video on YouTube and uh, um, just with one line, you, 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 you provide the YouTube ID in the video tag, and when you use our player, you can put a, uh, basically our player uh, design on top of a YouTube video. So we actually now integrate with that. There are some limitations. You cannot use a, a, a video that is monetized, that is showing ads, you know. I will tell you the details afterwards. There are some uh, problems with the yeah, API. Just one clarification. By integration, do you mean that uh, can, I can integrate all my videos in my YouTube account with uh, if I am having your player in my site, I can get all the YouTube videos to that? Absolutely. I show you an example if I have the connection. So you can, it's sublimevideo.net slash YouTube. Uh, yeah. So basically, for instance, here, oh, ah, yeah, sorry. Let me. So this is now. It, it, I have a very slow connection. It's okay. I just show. It's it, the video is not working. But basically, the video is hosted on YouTube, and uh, uh, the you know this is our player. And here we have another one. It's uh, our video with uh, the simple uh, um, player that uh, that you show in the slides. And the video is hosted on YouTube. But we you can have uh, uh, our player with our custom feature on it. And it will work on the iPad also and all the, the platforms. I have a question. Um, I'm here. Yes. Uh, so uh, this is this is like kind of a cloud service, right? Sorry. Is this like a kind of a cloud service? I so I didn't understand the. Is it a cloud hosted service? Is there a self hosted? Uh, ah, okay. Uh, at the moment, it's a cloud-only service, yes. Okay. Um, and where will the videos be hosted? In our end or in your end? The video, we, uh, you know, we say we are a cloud uh, service, but it's just to deliver the player files. So the video assets, you can put them wherever you want. Generally, most of the customers, they use a CDN. Uh, it's called, it can be S3 with CloudFront. It can be Akamai or uh, anything. And then, so... We just use the, uh, our, our CDN to deliver you as fast as possible the player files. So as an enterprise, if we have a private intranet and yeah. if we need to use this, so what, what do you say about that? Yeah, so <laughs> if you are an enterprise customer and uh, we could maybe uh, have a look into it and uh, provide a self-hosted license, but you know, it's, uh, we don't do it uh, right now, but we, we might... Uh, uh, consider it for uh, enterprise customer, yes. Uh, and last question, do, do you have any um, open source, like developers like me, who can try playing around and contributing it? Contributing That's, it? Uh, that, so, um, I mean, the, the play, we have a JavaScript API that 
it's, it's documented and you can use it to control the player and to interact with the rest of the page. But uh, to use the framework that I presented at the end of the talk, this is what I was saying, it is not yet ready, but we definitely want to give some sort of access. It could be via an SDK or open sourcing. And we are, right now we are open to all, uh, we need feedback and we are open to all uh, uh, options. Hi. Hi. Hey. Yes, hi. <laughs> I have so many questions. Uh, I got a question. Uh, could you describe more, uh, more deeply about uh, the technologies you use in your framework? Is it written completely on JavaScript, Node.js, uh, or what's the technology it's so, based on? Yeah, so basically to write, it's, it's JavaScript. It's actually based on CoffeeScript. So you would write every, to write a player like this, you code it in, uh, in CoffeeScript. Uh, so the your Horizon fr framework is completely written in uh, JavaScript. Yeah, yep. yep. completely, cool. yep. entirely. Cool. And, and another question, I really think I should uh, r uh, read it about in your site, but <laughs> I'll ask. Uh, do, you, uh, do you have some commercial uh, lic uh, licenses for this? Uh, so the question is uh, where where you get uh, a bu uh, th this uh, bunch of money, monies your company g g uh, where where is the uh, money t uh, taken from uh, for, for developing all this uh, crazy stuff? So, so <laughs> I didn't understand the last part of the question. Uh, How do we make money? That's yep. a question. Ah, okay, very easy. No problem. <laughs> so <laughs> basically, you know, You know, primary, yeah, I, I want to see. There is a, but basically, the, the modular player is uh, the one that uh, everybody can use. You just click the sign. Now I'm, I'm already logged in, but otherwise there is a sign up button up there. You sign up, and uh, you already get for free a lot of value. But uh, when you use the player for free, we add uh, a Sublime Video logo for a couple of seconds in the corner of the video at the beginning. And then uh, you can basically uh, buy features, you know. So for free, you get already a lot. But uh, you can, uh, for instance, the YouTube integration is free. But uh, for instance, if you want to add social uh, sharing feature, you can buy the add-ons to add that feature, you know. So we basically monetize the add-ons. And because this framework is completely modular, it allows us to, to add these uh, features in a modular way. And so we can basically say, okay, this feature is free. We built it into the player. This feature will be a paid f uh, feature. Yeah. Thank you. And then uh, we have uh, another way of making money is uh, for uh, uh, more uh, um, uh, enterprise uh, uh, customers where we uh, can basically provide them with a custom tailor-made player like the one that we did for Sony, you know. It's a completely tailor-made player and that's also, it's, it's a custom pricing that we do for them. Hi, I have a question. Over here. Yeah, hi. Hi. So, um, what you actually, uh, what you actually achieved is something like <coughs> taken uh, the disparities in the frameworks on different browsers and create a unique solution, one solution for it, and you know, try to uh, and run it pretty well, basically. So, but there's also another aspect to video streaming is like the video streaming servers, the different types of uh, encoding platforms, like as you mentioned, a couple of them. So, are you guys thinking on the lines of actually creating a unified solution for that part of the problem? Because I know some of the codecs are paid and proprietary copyright items, and other some are, some are uh, open sourced. So have you thought about that layer of the problem also? I mean, I'm really, really sorry, but uh, I think I understood the 50% of, uh, I, I'm really bad, I'm really, really sorry. I, I, uh, I didn't understand. Okay. Uh, the okay, I'm very fast, I think so. <laughs> Try to, sorry? Are you offering a video hosting service? No, 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 no. That's what, no, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try to be slower this time. That's like an inherent flaw from the build time. Build time. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. No, me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm a really sorry. I'll, I'll tell you the question again. So I'm saying, so you create a unified solution for different types of browsers and uh, to provide different kind of, same kind of experience in all browsers and you're monetizing it. Another layer which a company's, a uh, layer problem which companies face is the uh, encoding of videos. I think there are some copyrights around the encoders. And also the, uh, you have to pay some royalty to use some codecs. 
and also the problem of streaming uh, streaming servers and all so are you trying uh, are you thinking of going that side of the problem also providing a not just a video hosting solution but also a unified code encoding format which is uh, for all all companies you support okay um, maybe i i understood the uh, uh something sorry should the I guy mean, with the Aussie accent explain it maybe <laughs> that help are you looking at doing encoding solutions because encoding is a pain in the ass yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean <laughs> but i mean it, it, it wasn't his question right yeah. that was your question wasn't it, was, it? <laughs> okay so uh, <laughs> okay so i mean basically uh, one way would be to use uh, an existing service like YouTube or Vimeo Pro that handles the encoding for you very well, and we integrate with both uh, uh, YouTube or Vimeo Pro, you know? But if you want to uh, own your, so to have uh, uh, access to your sources yourself, not, a, I'm sorry for my English, it's becoming worse and worse. Uh, but if you want to, to have control on your sources, uh, there are cloud so uh, services that offer encoding, and there is one very good, which is called Zencoder, and it's basically, they have an API, and uh, you can basically, uh, it's encoding in the cloud, you know. You, you don't want to do that uh, with handbrake or manually in the terminal for your computer, because it's really a pain in the butt to do. So I, if I don't, later after the talk, just come to me, and I will try to exactly answer your question, okay, if it was not right. Okay. Um, so, how is your cloud service different from hot linking? Is it just hot linking with a bunch of paid features, yeah. like optional paid features? No, it's not just hot linking because basically there is all the user management uh, built into it. So basically, uh, you have first of all you have a user account. Then in the, your user account, you can create uh, your sites. And basically, for every site that you create, we build. A, a player that will only work in your site because we don't want that you know uh, people just co come to your site they steal the loader and they they steal and they use it on their site so there is a license check going on and then there is also another part that I didn't talk about it's all the analytics that we can do so we prob the players can uh, can send uh, uh, analytics and we display them for you you know usage uh, uh, and video plays. Uh, and so you can basically see the, so that's. Yeah, okay, cool, that makes yeah. sense, cool. Uh, thank you, thank you, Zeno. Thank you, thank you. So, uh, 